Hello, I'm Kimberly Dondo, Digital Content Manager, and welcome to In Conversation With, the podcast series that delves into the world of financial services and brings you face to face with some of the most notable figures in the industry. Listen as we discuss topics that are currently facing the industry and hear from visionary CEOs to disruptive innovators as we bring you a diverse array of voices and perspectives. We'll explore the challenges they faced, the lessons they've learned, and the insights they have to share about the ever-evolving landscape of financial services. Hello and welcome to In Conversation With. I'm Kimberly Dondo, and in this episode, I'm joined by Rachel Edwards, financial planner at Charterhouse Group. Thank you for joining me today, Rachel. Hi, thanks for having me, Kimberly. Um, So could you give us a bit of a background into yourself and how you got started in the industry? Yes. So um, through COVID, I suppose, I changed from accountancy to the financial um, space and I worked for an independent financial advisor and thought, oh, I really like this. This is um, really varied. You're really helping people. Um, So, yeah, I, I, I sort of developed from there and I worked from a compliance firm as well. So I had sort of the back in, uh, you know, the, the backbone, if you like, to financial advice before I actually became qualified. Yeah. And so can you share a bit of your experience having gone through the Ver Foundation's advisor incubator? Um, Haley was the one who kind of connected us um, and I was very interested to kind of have an overview and get the perspective from the incubies as she calls them. Mm -hmm. So um, what were your initial expectations and apprehensions and were those expectations met or... Yeah, so um, whilst whilst doing all of my training, I found on the FT Advisor this Verve Foundation incubator program, and I thought, well, that sounds interesting. So I applied. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get in the first cohort, but I did get to the second cohort, um, and actually, I was qualified by this point. So actually, it was. I don't know whether it was better or not, but I certainly really valued and enjoyed my time on the program I met a lot of different advisors with um they were sort of earlier or later on through their journey they were older advisors that wanted to, to develop a more holistic approach um Haley has been absolutely incredible and everybody else at the Verve just through the support of sort of getting you know communications and um systems and tools and and any any little piece of something that you just sort of doubt with you just ask the team ask the community so it's been a huge huge part of my journey yeah and I wonder what that aha moment was for you that made you think entrepreneurship might be a path you want to go down um for me I've always kind of had that streak I used to have businesses years ago um and a kind of yeah how how I work is just get on with things and a lot of firms don't sort of let you just get on and, and move as quick as I like to um so yeah that ha ha moment I've always had since early 20s yeah yeah I think yeah some people want the ability to have that freedom um that freedom is something that scares me. I'm very much someone who mm-hmm. enjoys having um, feedback from people. And I think, is that is that not a, a, not a fear, but is that not something that you might be a little apprehensive of, not knowing, not having kind of some, some people or someone to just have that feedback from? Yeah, I completely get that. And in business, it's quite a lonely place. But what I've done is I've surrounded myself with people like Haley and the community at The Verb. So you're kind of not on your own. You don't mm. have that lonely space. You don't have that. You don't have that. Oh, have I done this right? Is this is this the right way of doing things? Because you literally they, they are like your work family. Mm-hmm. Every moment that you need that sort of feedback from, you've got somebody to go and ask. And um 
Could you share any specific examples of how the incubator's mentoring, training, or community helped you overcome challenges and achieve your goals? Yes, definitely. One of the um, advisor incubator program, like one of the courses that we went into, we had speakers from a platform called Just FA, Mm -hmm. and uh, it's a digital advice platform it allows advisors to deal with clients with less money than the typical um but it gives you that safe checking that feedback that like you can't move on until you've done all the compliance points with the client but because it's all digital i can reach you from all over the country and um it sort of keeps cost low so that was an incredible part of the journey because once I had that course and we had that sort of two hour session with everybody at the Just FA, it was, oh wow, I can help more people. I can I can help with the advice gap. I can reach people with with less money than the normal IFA practice can help. Um, so that was definitely a, a changing point for me. Mm-hmm. And what were the most valuable resources or tools provided by the incubator that you found instrumental in your journey? Um, So again, they've got like a platform kind of a tool that you can log in, you can put all your policies in there, all your dates. It sort of keeps you accountable. And when you're running your own firm, there's certain things that need to be done by certain deadlines. So for me, that the the Verve's platform, if you like, was really key. You can you can do your file checks on there. You can do training on there. You, you can request compliance help on there. It under one roof, which is perfect, um, mm-hmm. and you can access different people within the Verve. Mm-hmm. And how has your experience as an entrepreneur transformed you personally and professionally? I know that you said that you've always had that entrepreneur mm-hmm. spirit within you, but. It has it at this stage in your life, has it kind of shifted your perspective slightly? Um, I have a nine year old son, so it's very hard as a as a mum to juggle school and work. So being that entrepreneurial person, it's definitely helps me be a better mom, have more time with him. Um, it, in the long run, I'd like to think that my husband can stop his employment and kind of help with the business side for me so it becomes like a family run business yeah um so yeah I think if I was working for a person I don't think I'd be able to give Logan my little boy the the time that he needs growing up the same and that's not saying that my customers don't get what they need because they certainly get everything that they need but it just means that I manage my time and I manage what I do with the clients the same as I manage what I do with my son so Yeah. Yeah. Having that flexibility is so important, especially when you are a parent. Um, And I also wondered if there were any unexpected surprises or challenges that arose during your journey, whether it is in setting up the business or during the time when you were in the incubator. And if you have faced those issues, any issues, how did you adapt to them? I wouldn't really say issues. It's more like systems and tools and finding the right one, that one is aligned to you and is going to be good for the end client. Um, It's about trial and error, but it takes a lot of time to have those trial and errors. So by having the Verve Foundation, it meant that that time was was quicker. It was more speeded up because you've got other people to ask who uses what, what do you think is good. Um, So, yeah. Not not too many issues personally. It was more around systems and controls. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure you you talked a little bit about regulation and there's help with the Ver Foundation to deal with uh, regulation. And we've had a lot of mostly um, advisors who have been in the industry for twenty plus years um, talking about their issues and uh, their feelings towards the consumer duty mm-hmm. not being completely positive did what were what were your thoughts on implementing that or was it not that jarring to you because when you came into it it was already you know kind of in, in effect or coming into effect so you knew this was an extra step that you would just have to look into yes it was definitely I think easier for somebody like myself because I came in just before it started 
and the training that I'd had sort of implemented all of that aspect of it. Um, and like I said, I used to work for a compliance company before. So um, I didn't find it particularly hard, but I can see that the older advising firms would have maybe more of a struggle facilitating it all and that's purely down to the advisor I don't think all of them will have a struggle but Mm. if they are more older school in the sense of like sales rather than holistic I think that's where people would struggle yeah yeah definitely that's what we were debating Mm. when we were talking about it um I always just compared it to you know uh, as a journalist if I had come in decades ago when it was just you know paper not even online um just publishing in magazines and then having to transition to doing things digitally and then also now having to have you know like a social media presence as well I think that would be jarring because also I think we see a lot about marketing uh yourself and we I, I see a lot of conversations being had about how financial advisors also need to start thinking about marketing themselves on social media yeah um is that something that you are actively doing or hope to do in the future yeah so from from the beginning I've been very conscious of mainly Facebook mm-hmm. and I do get quite a really good um sort of recommendations on there when anybody posts in the local areas as anybody got a financial advisor I do get a really good influx of my name being shouted which is really nice to see yeah. um and then from LinkedIn I'm trying to develop more on LinkedIn just because I like to help business owners mostly and obviously most business owners are on LinkedIn um so yes I do like to be very visible and educational and trying to help the wider range even if they necessarily can't get financial advice or they're not in the right area to get it I just think if they've read a social media post and that helps then I've done my job yeah I think there's such a focus on like getting younger people advice or getting younger advisors into the profession as well. Um, so a lot of people when they when you talk about social media, they think you're talking about, you know, TikTok or something like mm. that. But I do think that Facebook is a gold mine because I know that the people who are actively on that platform are very active on that platform. Yeah. So being able to, you know, go into those groups, those communities, I can see it being of benefit um, because you can, especially because also it does as a platform, Facebook does have issues with mis- misinformation. So if someone yes. like you is present to be like, no, actually that yeah, come talk to me, I can lead you in the right direction. That's yeah, better. I mean, I, I'm, I have seen some firms like post quite particular things. I like to be quite more generic so that there's no actual financial advice given. It's more of a, a throw a load of ideas out there and, one of these could fit with you kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I like to be quite storytelling. So like I'll use client scenarios and I feel that people actually sit with that a lot better. Yeah, because you can relate to it um, Mm -hmm. and it's it feels more realistic rather than, I think also the fear or the issue sometimes maybe is that if you're being very specific, there's a point where you might end up using jargon that people don't understand, um, which is that kind of barrier into yeah. having people engage with you for sure um and um if you could go back in time mm. uh, and give advice to yourself at the start of this journey what would you say I could probably go one better than that if I could go back in time and tell my 21 year old self as a business owner what I know now my mm. life would be very different and that's probably why I am who I am today because I had an accountant, I paid the tax man, but nobody had ever told me about a pension. Nobody ever said anything about any protection policies. And at 21 years of age, I had a very good business. And if I could have put in pensions and protection and stuff like that, it would have been a very different lifestyle, um, which is why I'm so passionate about helping like younger business owners, you know, in the 30s that probably were in the, are in the same boat as I was back then. They Nobody's told them, yes, they pay the accountant, but not all accountants tell them about the pensions and the protections and stuff like that. So for me, I am really passionate because I've been that person without that advice. 
so yeah I'd probably I'd probably tell myself plenty of things <laughs> <laughs> that is so we were um me and my um colleague Lois were having that conversation where we were like if neither one of us worked within you know journalism but mm. under the umbrella of financial services we wouldn't know or care much about our pension unless we had someone in our circle who cared or was yeah. into the pensions. So I think for me, when I was 25, I started working for a pensions brand and that's when I started understanding a lot more about my pension and also understanding that minimum co contribution that I was doing wasn't yeah. really going to give me the life that I'd want when, if I wanted to retire at well, now it's like it keeps going up every <laughs> couple of years. It's going to be like um, 68 for us, I think. <laughs> I think for my generation, it's like for my age group, it's like 70s at this point, which oh, is like, no. oh my gosh. Um, but again, it was something that I ended up having conversations with my parents and being like, what are your pensions like? And my sister is also someone who has always been self-employed. Um, and I think if... I wasn't there to mention about the importance of pensions and talk about what I'd been writing about, what I was thinking about that day. She would never have thought to put money aside for her retirement because she'd think that, you know, like the state pension is there. Um, yeah. I'm. She wants to save for like a house, a car, all of those everyday things that we're told that we need, but you're never really told about looking to the future and also income protection and all those other things, you know, mm -hmm. that now before I used to like plug my ears when my parents were talking about like their life insurance and be like, la la la, I don't want to think about it. But now yeah. I'm like, tell me where these things are, because again, this is very important information to have and to know. Mm. And I think that's where upon meeting a client, I, I sort of look at their circumstances and I've got one client that's very, very young and actually she's very, very switched on in the sense of I'd love to start looking at pension contributions, but I also want to see how much deposit do I need for a house, how much do I need to earn. So you have the real, very young, fresh start of, of people that are thinking about these things. It's just how do you reach those people mm -hmm. and then sort of guide them until they need a financial advisor um, and I'm completely open to that because I just think that if I can give something back to somebody now they're more likely to come back to me in 10 years time yeah. knowing that it helps them in the beginning yeah definitely I'd be like I remember when I talked to Rachel mm. and she gave me all those tips I'll go back to her and ask her yeah. more yeah, yeah. Um, so what are your future aspirations for the future of uh, your business and how has the incubator experience shaped your long-term vision? So I've, I've always been very ambitious and wanting um, a really not a nice life for, for myself and my family, um, mm -hmm. but also for the clients. I want clients that are slightly younger than the typical IFA firm. Um, just so that I can spend a good 20 to 30 years with them. I want people to be onboarded now and me to have a very good long time with them. Um, the advisor incubator has so, sort of supported that because they open many doors that you didn't know about. Um, for example, the, the digital platform, I wouldn't have known about that if it wasn't for them. It means that I can help the younger clients, the people with less money than uh, a typical IFA firm would expect accept. Um, so yeah, I would I would really like to be in a space where the company is really thriving and I can then sort of employ a younger person, somebody that we can train up, somebody that might not have had that chance. And then sort of step back and go into like education, go into schools and 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 you know, give something back that way. Yeah. And in your opinion, what are the most pressing challenges facing financial advice in the UK today? And how is your business uniquely positioned to address them? I think we have all got the regulation and the compliance side of things. Um, it does kind of stop you just being you and just being in front of a client just because you, there's so much things to do. But that's where you've got teams like the Verve behind you that sort of looks after that kind of stuff for you. Mm -hmm. um, 
I'm positioning myself to to sort of hit the younger, so the mm-hmm. 30-ish. And I think that, one, it does set me apart from most advising firms because they usually are after 50 to 60 plus. Yeah. And I just think that is so saturated and that's what everybody's always done. Yes, I might not get more, more money now. I might not be getting bigger fees now like those are. However, like I said, I want to be with them for the next 20 to 30 years. So I know that it'll come back to me in turn. Mm-hmm. That's a long-term vision. I think yeah. most people, I think when I did business plans, you know, when I was in university, it was always like, think about it with a five-year plan. And I always mm-hmm. thought, that's so interesting because I would want to stick with my business for longer than five years. But yeah. um, in in business sense, I think most people just think, make your business up and then sell it at some point. But you mm-hmm. have that perspective of I want to keep yeah. the line and keep going until, you know, I can't go anymore, which mm-hmm. is really great. And you never know. I'd like I'd like to. My son is only nine at the moment, but, you know, in another 10 plus years, mm-hmm. he could you know, he really likes Take math over. now. He, yeah. he could sort of come into the business. It all depends on what he ends up wanting to be. Yeah. I that... it's a train driver. So <laughs> <laughs> that will change. And honestly, even when he is 18, the potential mm. of him changing his mind yeah. five more times is yeah. very high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, So what advice would you give uh, to any other financial advisors who are contemplating starting their own businesses or considering joining an incubator program? Highly recommend having that network of support. So uh, any, any kind of incubator program that you can be a part of, go on it. I, I joined and at that point that I joined, I had done some of the things like the business planning and stuff like that. But do you know what? It gives you that feedback. It gives you that sense check. So, yes, you might know things, but there will be so many more things that you need to learn. Um, so, yeah, anybody that's starting their own firm, surround yourself with like-minded people, people that are going to support you with different aspects of it and make sure that you've got like that compliance backing just to, like I said, give you that sense check and that feedback. Yeah. And make your life easier. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. Definitely. (laughs) Well, thank you so much for speaking with me, Rachel. I really enjoyed hearing your story and about your journey. And I look forward to see where you go. Mm, Thank you for having me. It was really nice to uh, sort of talk through things with you. So thank you. Thanks. Thank you for listening to In Conversation With. We do hope that you enjoyed it. Please do keep up to date with all our new releases via Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you get your podcasts from. You can also keep up to date with all our new content published on the Money Marketing website, as well as our print edition, Money Marketing Magazine. So make sure to subscribe. Follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. See you next time.